tried to stop the hijackers prior to 9-11, but were blocked. Later, the military would begin a smear campaign against them in order to discredit their findings. A Pennsylvania congressman says there's a smear campaign going on inside the Pentagon, and he wants the defense chief to get to the bottom of it. Republican Congressman Kurt Weldon says Pentagon officials are trying to ruin one of their own who's gone public about a top secret military intel unit. Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, who was the first member of Able Danger to go public, has now been told in writing by the Defense Intelligence Agency that he can't speak to members of Congress or their staff without prior approval. And now a security clearance, which allowed him to deal with classified information, has been pulled. The congressman says Schaefer has been gagged, punished, for speaking up. It's obvious to me this is a clear attempt to silence this guy, but now even more than to silence him, to ruin him as a person and a military officer. I've talked to all the able danger players, and they all agree this is a witch hunt against Tony. It's wrong. It's un-American. It's unacceptable. Pentagon reportedly does not want the public to hear next week's Senate testimony about the former secret intelligence unit known as Able Danger. Two congressional sources have told Fox News that the military is pressuring senators to move the hearings behind closed doors. When the Able Danger hearings were held, Schaefer and others were gagged. Eventually, Schaefer would be able to speak at a whistleblower's hearing. Many of us take seriously our oath of office to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Let me be up front here. I am no Boy Scout. I was not hired as an intelligence officer because I hung out at the science, uh, Christian Science Reading Room. My job is to get information using tried and true intelligence methodologies. According to my legal counsel, until I disclosed the able and danger information, I was a rock star. It was my work as a chief of, the, of DIA's Special Mission Task Force uh, back in 2000, I mean, in 1998, that I became involved with Able Danger. My officers and I were working at the cutting edge of technology and DoD black operations. Most of all of my operations and operational records remain classified. With all this evidence, why did the 9-11 Commission and Pentagon suppress valuable information about the hijackers' activities leading up to the attacks? It was widely reported that men had been celebrating the attack after recording the first plane strike. They were not Al-Qaeda, but they were detained. I grabbed my binoculars and I could see the towers from my window. And this is where I, you know, I'm looking. And all of a sudden, down there, I see this van park. And I see three guys on top of the van. And I could see that they were, like, happy. You know, they, 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 were, they didn't look shocked to me. You know, they didn't look shocked. There was a group of Israelis, uh, some of whom later were revealed as Mossad assets, who were arrested after cheering and high-fiving and videotaping uh, the crash of the airplanes into the World Trade Towers. Several other men were detained after a van full of explosives was stopped outside of Manhattan. Earlier we had heard that an FBI spokesperson said that there was a report on the George Washington Bridge, which is another facility which you folks are responsible for policing, uh, a report that there had been a van uh, stopped there that had explosives. Asked this week about another sprawling investigation and the detention of 60 Israelis since September 11th, the Bush administration treated the questions like hot potatoes. I would just refer you to the Department of Justice whether I'm not familiar with the report. I'm aware that uh, some Israeli citizens have been detained. With respect to why they are being retain detained and the other aspects of, of your question, whether it's because they are in intelligence services or what they were doing, I will uh, defer to the Department of Justice and the FBI to answer that. On March 6, 2002, a draft report from the DEA said it may well be an organized intelligence gathering activity. Despite all of this, all the Israelis were let go without any espionage charges being filed. Fox News anchors Brit Hume and Carl Cameron would do a four-part investigation into these allegations in December of 2001 and yield stunning results. It has been more than 16 years since a civilian working for the Navy was charged with passing secrets to Israel. Jonathan Pollard pled guilty to conspiracy to commit espionage and is serving a life sentence. At first, Israeli leaders claimed Pollard was part of a rogue operation, but later took responsibility for his work. Now Fox News has learned some U.S. investigators believe that there are Israelis again very much engaged in spying in and on the U.S. 
Since September 11th, more than 60 Israelis have been arrested or detained, either under the new Patriot anti-terrorism law or for immigration violations. A handful of active Israeli military were among those detained, according to investigators, who say some of the detainees also failed polygraph questions when asked about alleged surveillance activities against and in the United States. Investigators suspect that the Israelis may have gathered intelligence about the attacks in advance and not shared it. A highly placed investigator said there are, quote, tie-ins. But when asked for details, he flatly refused to describe them, saying, quote, evidence linking these Israelis to 911 is classified. I cannot tell you about evidence that has been gathered. It's classified information. Now, when the FBI investigated, uh, it quickly unraveled to be the largest foreign spy ring ever uncovered inside the United States, the largest. Even the Soviet Union had not been spying on the United States as much as Israel has been doing. So they, the FBI started to round up these spies. They started to arrest them very quietly. And they were about halfway through this process of rounding up this spy ring when 9-11 happened. Numerous classified documents obtained by Fox News indicate that even prior to September 11th, as many as 140 other Israelis had been detained or arrested in a secretive and sprawling investigation into suspected espionage by Israelis in the United States. Investigators from numerous government agencies are part of a working group that's been compiling evidence since the mid-90s. These documents detail hundreds of incidents in cities and towns across the country that investigators say, quote, may well be an organized intelligence gathering activity. The first part of the investigation focuses on Israelis who say they are art students from the University of Jerusalem and Bazalel Academy. Documents say they, quote, targeted and penetrated military bases, the DEA, FBI, and dozens of other government facilities, and even secret offices and unlisted private homes of law enforcement and intelligence personnel. The majority of those questioned, quote, stated they served in military intelligence, electronic surveillance intercept, and or explosive ordnance units. Why would Israelis spy in and on the U.S.? A general accounting office investigation referred to Israel as Country A and said, quote, according to a U.S. intelligence agency, the government of Country A conducts the most aggressive espionage operation against the U.S. of any U.S. ally. The document concludes, quote, Israel possesses the resources and technical capability to achieve its collection objectives. What about this question of advanced knowledge of what was going to happen on 9-11? How clear are investigators that some Israeli agents may have known something? Well, it's very explosive information, obviously, and there's a great deal of evidence that they say they have collected, none of it necessarily conclusive. It's more when they put it all together. A bigger question, they say, is how could they not have known? Almost a direct quote, Brett. It is now apparent that this intelligence ring was inside the U.S., had prior knowledge of 9-11, and had a classified role in 9-11, which officials refused to discuss. It was also able to penetrate U.S. intelligence agencies and secret offices, yet all were released. The men who were detained due to the report they were taping the first plane crash, and then celebrating and joking about it, actually went on television and admitted it was their job to record the attack. And at that point, we were taken for another round of questioning, this time related to our allegedly being members of Mossad. The fact of the matter is, we are coming from a country that experiences terror daily. Our purpose was to document the event. How could they have known about the attack? And who sent them to document it? The evidence points to a large intelligence network inside the United States that had teams on the ground, such as the ones recording the attack, and electronic surveillance teams gathering information. Another team who was involved that day detonated explosives on the ground. We have both suspects under K. We have the suspects who drove to the van. The van exploded. Yeah, I just want to make sure you and your guys are all right over there, K. That's all. You know, we have both field trans driven that exploded. One location, K Street between 6 and 7. The unit is on the scene on K 6 and 7. Which unit are you? How would these teams obtain their information? The investigation on our side basically tracked back to two 